Hey, what's up, YouTube? We subnetting like a boss. Part one. I'm your host, Dewan Lightfoot. What is subnetting? A subnetwork or a subnet is a logical subdivision of an IP network. The practice of dividing a network into two or more networks is called subnetting. I got that definition from Wikipedia. It was pretty good to me. Now, this is from Cisco. Subnetting allows you to create multiple logical networks that exist within a single class A, class B, or class C network. If you do not subnet, you are only able to use one network from your class A, class B, or class C network, which is unrealistic. Now, like I said, that was from Cisco. Imagine an IP address pod. We have the IP address 172.16.0. Dot one slash 16. Now, this is a class B address. In a class B address, you have 65,534 hosts. What that means, if I can pull it up. So, what that means is in this pot here, we have 65,000 hosts trying to communicate at the same time. Now, with subnetting, what we could essentially do is take this pie. Divided in half, and now we have two subnets, which is going to be subnet one and subnet two. And then we can take that same pi and divide it again, and then we have subnet three and subnet four. And we can continue to take that pi and continue to divide that pi until we're left with <laughs> basically one piece of the pie for everybody. But what we're doing with this pie is we're taking each pie and giving it to a company. Let's say um, Comcast Cable or um, AT&T or Sprint. Each slice of this pie I could distribute out to, um, let's say, Walmart or I distribute out to What's another large corporation like um, Google? I give them a block of IP addresses. What they do is subnet it down even more to limit the broadcast domains and also subnet for, to provide security for the different networks that they have in Google or Walmart. So what is an IP address? An IP address Internet protocol address is a unique network address computing devices such as laptops, smart TVs, tablets, and Amazon Fire TV sticks used to identify their self and to communicate across the internet. An example of an IP address would be 192.168.1.1. Now that would be if you open up your computer in order for it to talk to the internet, it would need an IP address. So your router or your Wi-Fi will have to assign your device an IP address, which would then essentially be NATed to be able to access the internet. Now there are two types of IP addresses, IPv4 and IPv6. IPv4 is the, the most common and it's the, actually the oldest. And we're actually running out of IPv4. If not, we're pretty much out of IPv4 addresses. So IPv6 has been around for years now, over 10 years, but it's just now really catching on. It's hexadecimal IP addressing, which provides a larger range of IP addresses for devices to communicate across the internet. Now, IPv4 address, what is it? IP addresses are made up of four octets of eight bits that total 32 bits. So when you look at that 192.168.0.1, you essentially have one octet here, one octet here, one octet here, and one octet here separated by the decimal. So what you're looking at is the ones and zeros that represent that 192.168.0.1, which because computers actually communicate in ones and zeros. 
They're, they're simple. We're complicated. <laughs> so we'll go over that here shortly. Now the practice of dividing a network into two or more networks is called subnetting. And here we have IPv4 um, network ranges, which is breaks down into five classes. Now here we have the five classes of public IPv4 addresses. So a class A would be one through 127. Now, some of those addresses will be private and not um, routable across the internet. And 127 is actually gonna be your loopback address, the whole range um, you can actually use to, for loopback testing of your um, computer device. Now, there are 127 subnets in the class A, and there's over 16 million hosts per subnet or network on the class A. Class B is going to be 128 through 191 and there's going to be 16,000 over 16,000 subnets and over 65,000 hosts per subnet. So th these are going to be for your larger corporations like Google, Sprint, Apple, um, the military, etc. And then your class C is going to be more for your your small organizations and that goes from 192 that 223, um, that 255.255.255, .255 and there are over 2 million subnets in the class C, and each class C has 254 hosts. Now, there are also um, class D and class E. Class D is going to be 224 through 239, it's going to be its range. Now, the only time you really use that class D, which is a multicast range, is going to be when you start um, troubleshooting and configuring EIGRP, OSPF, um, Skype, things of that nature. They actually use multicast communications. And then this 240 through 255 is reserved experimental. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe they experiment on aliens with that IP address or something. Have no clue. Never seen it in use, but um, it's there. Along with the IPv4 address ranges, you have private addresses. Private addresses are going to be for your home and office networks. These addresses do not travel the internet, meaning they are not routable. So they're going to be internal. If you were to actually do an IP config on your home laptop, you would see you would have one of these ranges. Um, there's class A, which is going to be a 10 network. That's one subnet. Um, over 16 million hosts per subnet. Now those can be subnetted. Um, you can actually subnet those networks, but out the box, that's just the whole 10 range. And then class B is going to be 16 subnets, 172.16.0.0 through 172.31.255.255. And there's over 65,000 hosts per subnet. And then you have your class C. Class C is going to be 192.168.0.0 through 192.168.255.255. 256 subnets, but only 254 hosts per subnet. Now, most small organizations, most organizations will use the class C. Now, they may subnet um, a class A 10 network down to a class C, but Many times in the office environment, you don't want to make your networks larger than a class C because that broadcast domain gets so large that you have um, that the broadcast domain gets so, lot, so large that it limits your communication across your network. You want to keep your subnets, depending on how you're subnetting, you know, below that class C range. Lastly, we're going to talk decimal to binary. Decimal to binary is very important to understand. Subnets, subnet mass define the network, meaning there are 32 bits in the subnet mass. So if you have an IP address of 192.168.0.1, that subnet mass, or let's write it over here, if you have an IP address of 
dot zero dot one. As we discussed before, this range is going to be a class C. That's a class C range. And if you look here, class C, the subnet mass is going to be 255, 255, 255, meaning the first 24 bits is going to identify your class C network. So decimal to binary is very important to understand how to determine your network ID because your network ID is going to determine, you know, what default gateway you're communicating, how is your information being routed, etc. Now, a class A is going to be identified by the first 8 bits. And if you're catching on, class B is identified by, well, the first 16 bits. When you're, as I said before, when you're defining the subnet mass, the first eight bits of a class A network defines the class A um, subnet mass. Now, the last 24 bits is going to identify your host. So the last 24 bits will identify your host. And that's the same for class B. Your first 16 bits is going to identify your network. And then your last 16 is going to identify your host. And then class C, your first 24 bits will identify your network. And your last 8 bits will identify your host. Again, so when we look at IP address, an IP address is 32 bits broken up into four octets of eight bits and what you're looking at here is the four octets of eight bits ones and zeros simple ones and zeros now now decimal to binary conversion like i said this is broken up to ones and zeros so if you break down each octet so let's break down one octet which is eight bits each place of that bit is broken down into 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, and 1. Powers of 2. Now, when you add this all up to get your subnet mass, you get 255s if all the ones are on. So, if you have a 1, it's on. If you have a 0, it's off. If they're all on, it's 255. If they're all off, what are they? Zero. Now, if we had an IP address of 192.168.10.2, we break this up in four octets. These are four octets. We take 192, we put it in the first octet. Now we have 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, and 1. Now we want to add up to equal 192. What we're going to do is put a 1 under 128. Then we're going to put a 1 under 64. 128 plus 64 equals 192. Now the rest are going to be zeros. We move on to the next octet. In the next octet, we have 168. We need to equal 168. Now, you go from left to right, 128, we, that works, we need at least 128. Now, if we add 64, that's going to be 192, so that's too much. We put a zero. Now, if we add 32, that's going to be, one, that's going to be 160. So, 128 plus 32 is 160. We need eight more bits. 16 is too much, so we put a zero. And now, we're at eight, we put a one, be rest of, the rest will be zeros. Now, we're on to the next octet. We need 10. Obviously, 128 is too much, zero. 64 is too much, zero. 32, too much, zero. 16, zero. Eight, a one. So eight works. Four, too much. And then two, now we have 10. So we have zero, 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 one, zero, one, zero, which equals 10. And now we're on the last octet, which is two. 128 is too much, put a zero, 64, zero, 32, zero, 16, zero, eight, zero, four, zero, two. We put a one, it's on. 
and then one, zero. And so now your binary is going to be this. This is going to be your binary conversion for 192.168.10.2. This is your binary conversion right here. So we were to write 192.168.10.2 in the binary, we would have 1, Zero one zero dot zero 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 one zero. Is that too many zeros? Uh, nope, that's enough. All right, that's your binary conversion. So now we have a basic understanding of decimal to binary. Now my goal was to keep this video very basic because the next video will go over CIDR um, subnetting and CIDR notation. And then in part three, go over uh, VSLM. So that way you have three different videos to get a, a build up of understanding of information from um, the basics to the not so difficult to the a little more advanced. Keep it as simple as possible. I want to thank you all for viewing. Now, you can contact me at youtube.com forward slash Dewan Lightfoot and twitter.com at dlight330. I just got a Twitter. So hit me up on there if you got questions. I really appreciate everybody for viewing. I really appreciate everyone's support. It's been awesome. Shout out to the Heralds on their podcast. Look them up on SoundCloud. Um, shout out to my wife. Shout out to my mom for making me put on a suit. I love you, Mom. Um, yeah, I appreciate everybody. Look out for part two. It'll be out Tuesday. Peace.